Hello YouTube, I'm not Chuck and I decided to add a second house battery to my travel trailer in order to have longer times that I can use the batteries, the 12 volt batteries between charging. Uh, as you can see my battery is located on the tongue of the travel trailer. I currently only have one battery and uh, it's in that black case that you see uh, on the screen. The first thing we need to do before we uh, access the battery is make sure that the gas is turned completely off uh, from the bottle on the front of the trailer. That is done by turning the knob clockwise. Then to disconnect the cable, I turn that connector counterclockwise, uh, sniff to make sure I don't smell any propane, and if I do, I put the connector back on really quick and figure out what the problem is. The next step is to take the strap off the battery box uh, so I can remove the lid and expose the battery itself. The strap uh, goes completely around the battery box and the lid and underneath the rail supporting the battery uh, holding the entire assembly to the rails uh, on the trailer. The top just lifts off after the strap is removed. So here's my battery. You can see there are two places to make electrical connections. The one on the right is the ground connection. The one on the left was disconnected. That's the plus uh, DC voltage connector and I don't leave it connected unless I'm uh, using the batteries for some purpose. That prevents the battery from being um, discharged by something left on inside the trailer. Uh, what I'm going to do now is take a look at the current battery voltage um, and therefore determine what the level of charge is. It should be about 12.6 volts. As you can see, uh, it's down to 12.2 volts, uh, which is not bad, but since there's been nothing draining the battery, it should have stayed at 12.6 volts. So I've decided to replace that battery with a better one. In order to remove the ground cable from the battery, I'll need a half inch socket. Uh, the stud on the battery is a 5 16 18 thread per inch stud, but I need a half inch socket to fit those two hex nuts that I'm taking off. Once I get the cable off, I'll just let it uh, hang loose. There's no uh, danger to that whatsoever. There's the old battery or the somewhat weak battery being removed and um, here's a better battery being put in, at least I think it's better. First thing I do is check the voltage on that battery and see how it looks. As you can see the voltage there is 12.6 volts indicating that the battery is fully charged. Alright, I slid that battery and the battery box that holds it over to the right to make room for my second battery. The first thing I need to do is put in a battery box to hold it. As you saw on the end of the battery box, it's a group 24 which uh, refers to the size of the battery. Uh, next thing will be to uh, drop the new battery or newer battery uh, down in the battery box. Now as you can see on the new battery there are a couple of wing nuts there and on the uh, battery on the right there are a couple more hex nuts. The first thing I want to do is take those wing nuts and hex nuts off, uh, put them in a safe place because I'll be using them to attach the cables. Again, uh, the wing nuts come off with just uh, finger tightness. In this case, looks like the hex nuts weren't on there very tight, so I just took those off by hand as well. If I had needed a wrench, it would have taken a uh, half-inch uh, wrench or half-inch socket. These batteries are interstate batteries. They're deep cycle um, batteries intended for RV or marine use and the model number on the batteries is an SRM-24. Uh, I really like interstate batteries. They're not the cheapest ones. Um, they're not the most expensive ones, but they seem to good, give good value for the money. Uh, these cost about $120 each, brand new. Uh, 
Now, the next step is to begin connecting the two batteries together. Uh, that'll take two heavy cables to connect the two batteries together, one going from the positive terminal on one battery to the positive terminal on the other battery, just as you see in the picture. So I'll put that heavy cable up there, that happens to be a one gauge cable, and I'll put the two hex nuts and spin them down somewhat loosely uh, to keep that red cable from moving around. I use red for the positive on both batteries and I'll have a black cable that I'll put on the negative side, the negative terminal of both batteries and I'll uh, snug it down just exactly like I did uh, the red cable for the positive leads. Again I'm using a couple of hex nuts to secure uh, loosely secure both ends of that black cable on the negative terminals and I'll snug all four nuts down again with my half inch socket. As I tighten the socket you'll notice that I don't really put a lot of force on it. We want a good electrical connection. We want it tight enough that it won't vibrate loose but we don't want to take a chance on damaging the battery or the battery terminals by over tightening those two nuts. So just get them um, snug but don't over tighten them and run the risk of breaking something inside the battery. All right. Those seem to be in pretty good shape. So now I have my two batteries connected in what is called parallel. The next thing I'll do is uh, reconnect the positive wires that go to the travel trailer. I put the ring terminal over the stud and tighten that down with one of the wing nuts. In this case, as you can see, I'm only going to tighten that uh, hand tight. There's no reason to put a wrench on that. I could have put it, by the way, on either one of the positive terminals, but I'm going to make both connections here um, on the left-hand battery. There's electrically no difference, considering that I have very heavy cables connecting the two batteries together. Once again, I'm using a wing nut to put that ground back on, and at this point, I'm electrically reconnected with two batteries in parallel feeding my travel trailer. Next step will be to, uh, to tidy up the cables and put the battery box cover back on uh, both batteries. I'll do the left one as you can see here and I'll finish up when it's snug down. I'll finish up by putting the other um, battery box cover on the right battery box and putting both um, straps back in place. I'll uh, make sure that both straps go under the frame rails to hold the batteries in place. I'll reconnect the propane line to the tank. Um, if I needed to turn the propane back on, I would, but in this case, I don't. And the fourth step is to confirm that I actually do have 12 volt DC in the RV by turning on a light. So that does it. Um, I'll see you on the next video. And remember, I'm not Chuck.